Hey guys, what is going on? Today we are doing uh, a little bit on the <laughs> the installation of insulation. Did I right? Did I get that right? So I'm finally at the build portion of my van. <laughs> this past month, uh, or the month previous to this, I spent all in Santa Cruz, California with Tiny Watt Solar and Rooney Racing. Uh, Troy from Van Life Tech came down and I have now my heated floors installed, all the mechanicals for all of that, as well as Tiny Watt Solar uh, hooked it up with the solar roof deck, as well as my entire box, which is right back there itself. Now what we're gonna be doing is actually starting the build. Uh, I have to get a lot of things laid out and planned out. I've been meeting with my dad. Uh, I drove to Boston. Uh, I spent three days driving to Boston and it's just been a whirlwind of just, uh, just uh, so much crap. So it is hot here in Boston right now. I'm trying to work at a, at a nice pace, make sure we drink enough water. But this portion of the build is all about insulation and uh, what's on the other side of the insulation and maybe creating a thermal break. We'll get into all that throughout the entire video. I mentioned in my introductory video to the build series that I'm using stuff called rattle trap and then sprinters actually even have rattle trap that's already here. This is rattle trap right here. Um, and I can put a link in the description below. It's like a sound deadener, I guess. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting it onto like portions of the wall that's right there. I'm not going to put it on the sliding door because I'm actually going to be installing a window there. So really, I only need it in certain parts. It's actually really easy. It's peel and stick, that simple. difficult this is wall insulation from Havelock two inch bat it's pretty easy it looks like to deal with I don't know I've never really used wool but I did stop at the shop and I really enjoyed them pretty much what I'm gonna do is that right there how am I going to do it they don't like at Havelock they don't like using glues because they don't like anything off gassing I am probably just going to use uh, the gorilla spray adhesive as well as I have some like sheathing tape our tie back tape uh, right here as well that I'll be able to tape like across so you so there it is that's how it'll stay up so I'll, I'll put the tape from here to here or, or down that way and I'm able to put the insulation across so that's pretty much how I'm gonna do that and it, this is just a grunt work time consuming you know thing So guys, hey, we are in um, the next morning now. See, I kind of wanted to go over a few things uh, while it's a little bit of peace and quiet. So this is really how I'm doing my build. Now, everybody's different, but the complications of jumping around is because I, this is complicated. This is just how life is sometimes. So I am doing my build mostly or predominantly at my father's house. And my mother lives about 15, 20 minutes away from there. So I stay at my mom's for the most part. I do the building at my dad's. Why do I do the back and forth? There's a lot of people staying at my dad's house. My mom has a separate room for me, although my dad probably does as well. But my brother's coming to visit in town. So he's got his wife and two children. So it's going to be a full house over there. And I didn't want to move into there, leave and go back. So it just made sense for me to stay here and have a roof over my head and you know have a bathroom and everything else while i'm doing this build this video is in particular about really the starting of the construction process yeah you can see right behind me that i have insulation in the walls and you can see like a framing or furring strips whatever you want to call them right here on this particular build this is in a sprinter the pro masters i definitely suggest doing something like this with the sprinters you don't necessarily have to and I mean this as inferring strips because everything is on one plane uh, in the van when I mean one plane it's uh, on the pro masters you'll see the ribs the center rib and other ribs are all different depths in the sprinters everything is wall on one depth I'm not sure about the uh, transits just because I haven't really worked on the transits all that much 
I've only seen built out transits. This is how sprinters work. I know how pro masters work. The reason I'm doing firming strips is number one, it depends on what your finished wall wants to be. For example, my finished wall is actually probably just gonna be a, on the walls is going to be a quarter inch plywood and I'm probably gonna paint it a flat white or a matte white. I could actually just take that and attach it right to the metal wall. The only reason I'm trying not to do that is because I don't want to attach that directly to the metal. For moisture purposes, these will also create a thermal break. Thermal break, you can Google it. It pretty much just separates the atmosphere from the outside to what it's going to be in the inside. That's one of the reasons why you do a thermal break, whatever. Uh, other things, what I've seen people do for uh, the insulation purposes and the reason they like using these furring strips is they'll put insulation in like this or they'll even put like a rigid foam board, right? And then when they put their finished wall on, this is a half inch furring strip. I've seen people actually use a three quarter inch furring strip and then they'll put a half inch rigid foam board on your finished wall. So when you stick it to the fur, when you stick it to the furring strip, there's actually a gap of a quarter inch. Hopefully you can do the math on that. Three quarter inch furring strip and then a half inch insulation on the on the finished wall and then it'll create a very small but useful air gap inside. Now because this is a video on insulation and the beginning of the installment process, I kind of wanted to go over a couple other installation ideas that a lot of people use. I figured I might as well give out suggestions to other people out there and then you can take that the way that you want it. So one of the things uh, that I actually used in my last build, which I still like a lot, is just kind of a pain to fit it into spaces like, like down in here, or like just, it's a pain. And that's rigid foam board. You can get it in various sizes, half inch, uh, inch, inch and a half, two inch insulation, rigid foam board, or polyiso is a, another term people use for it. You wanna get the, the, the one that has the foil on both sides of it, that's like the highest density. I actually use that on the floor for my insulation that's actually below the radiant heat. And that's because you don't want anything coming up into the, the any cold air coming up into the pipes. I actually considered on using it on parts of the other parts of the build, but after I met with uh, Havelock Wool, I, there's just no way that I'm not using wool. It's amazing and I actually thoroughly enjoy it. I'll go, uh, if you haven't checked out that video, it's, and I'll put a link up in the card. Rigid foam board is one, poly iso board, whatever you want to call it. Don't use Pink Panther, The it's, it's fiberglass. I beg you not to use the fiberglass insulation. It's just not good. It's, it's cheap. If you want to use cheap insulation, go right ahead, but it's cheap. You probably insulate your entire van with foam board, uh, I have a 144. My last one was a 159 inch wheelbase ProMaster. I think you can probably do it all for about 200 bucks, maybe 250. I'm doing this one. I think the wool insulation, uh, they have like a van life package. I think it's like 240 plus shipping. Let me see if I can get some wool. The wool isn't bad and I can't really say any bad things about it. You can play around with it, you can rip it, you can split it in half, easy to cut with scissors. Again, this is not like fiberglass that I can rub it on my skin, it's not a problem. This is real sheep wool from New Zealand. The other insulation that people love to use is a uh, closed, closed cell spray foam. <sighs> I don't, I have nothing bad to say for spray foam. You just gotta prep the crap out of it because that stuff gets everywhere. So you have to close off your cab. You have to cover all your windows. You can spray it, it's fine. They Some people say it off gases. You take it as it is, I that's fine. Whatever you wanna do. I'm just not a fan of it. I just, I don't know. Like it's it's honestly a pain to me. Do I, like it's good. Like the really good quality spray is expensive. So you're probably paying triple the amount in insulation that you would for like a wool or a foam board. Now I'm only gonna give those three as suggestions because those are the only three that I would really be like cool with. Yeah, all right, fine. So I will also mention people use Thinsulate. I'm not a, like, I'm not a fan of Thinsulate. If you're gonna spend that money on insulation, I'd rather you just go with the wool. I don't know, I just don't like it. I don't I don't like the application of it. I don't like, I just like wool over Thinsulate. That's all that is. If you wanna use Thinsulate, go right ahead. Reflectix, oh my God, Reflectix. Everybody seems to be using Reflectix in their van builds. <laughs> oh, and how much this disturbs me is not even funny. All right, so I'm not gonna go into 
crazy amounts of details on why reflectics are not good or not useful in a van. If you go on to the Home Depot website, it will literally tell you in a PDF downloadable form that reflectics have to be used in a certain, you have to use it properly. And if it's not used properly, the R value on reflectics is less than one. So if you apply it straight to a metal, so if you take your Reflectix, and everybody knows what the Reflectix is, it's, still, it's like a silvery bubble wrap. And you'll see pictures like this all over Instagram and probably on YouTube. People make their, their entire van look like a spacecraft. You take these Reflectix, <laughs> and if you touch the metal with the Reflectix, you can't see that. If you touch the metal with the Reflectix, then guess what? The R value is nothing. If you actually touch reflectics to wood, it's actually useless. Why do people use reflectics or how do you use reflectics? You have to create an air gap with reflectics. So I believe I have not looked into this too much because I just do not like reflectics. Technically, when I put my finish wall on, could I have the reflectics on the finish wall and have the gap between the furring strips and the wool insulation? Yes, I could do that. Is it useful? I don't think so. By the way, we're in a van, metal shell on the outside, air on the inside. Guess what? There's going to be some sort of condensation. Now, the only way that you're gonna have condensation inside or create condensation is pretty much either through your breath, a type of heater that you use. My heater is a dry heat, I'm not too worried about it, but other people use propane and propane will cause uh, moisture in the air. So when that happens, your walls will sweat. Wool insulation actually absorbs it and then also uh, lets it out as well. That is one of the main reasons why I'm going with wool. I'm not gonna send you a lot of literature on wool, but I go. At, I ask you to go check out uh, Havelock Wool and they have a ton of literature on why wool insulation is the best insulation. Lastly, if you do go with wool and you contact Havelock Wool, Josh is the man by the way, let them know that you saw my video and you're interested in the wool insulation. I get zero kickbacks from that. I just want a good product to the people that are watching this. I am dead serious. I do not get a kickback for you guys buying wool from Havelock. Do not get the mineral grade wool. That's like, that's not real wool. This is actual sheep wool. I still have a lot more work to do and I'll show you guys right now. I still have the whole back door area of my van. I still have to insulate this whole back doors. That is right there, okay? Now you see, I'll show you what I have done right now. Yeah, for the insulation that's already done, which means I don't have that much left. I still have the sliding door left and everything, but, um, that is two bags worth of wool insulation. Uh, you do not need to stuff this into, like, yeah, I'm gonna stuff it into crevices, but you don't have to like stuff it to the point. You can see right here, I have, I have uh, this is a one, two inch bat. Now, because I want a little bit more insulation, I might put, I might actually split this in half, which I can just do like that, and then put like another inch back here, but you don't need to like stuff it with like, four bats is what I'm saying. You don't need like eight inches of wool insulation. The in, This wool is actually supposed to be a little breathable because it wants moisture to capture it and then release it. I actually insulated it over the wheel well, which is where the water tank is. So any cold air will not freeze my water tank. It won't anyways, because it's on a heated floor, but you get the picture. Pretty much this video to recap pretty much was the insulation, the start of the, uh, the, the framing system or furring strips, however you want to call it. Um, and really, the, this is the most important stage is building a van is like, uh, it's like chess, not checkers, all right? You have to plan six, seven, eight, nine, 20 moves ahead. <laughs> uh, and in checkers, you just move, you know, as your opponent moves. You don't, you don't really think about the next move. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like that. You have to think 10, 12 steps ahead before you can even move forward. So... Uh, the first thing my dad came in when he came into my van, he's like, all right, what are you using for finished walls? And I was like, what does that matter? Well, I mean, I didn't say that. I was, I'm just trying to give you guys a reference. I was like, I had the answers to the questions. What are you using for the finished walls? I want to use this and I want to use this. Okay, great. How are we going to apply it? We're going to do it this way and this way. Great. Okay. How are you going to do the Murphy bed? I don't know. We got to figure that out. So it's like, we didn't start framing all this out until we knew exactly what we were gonna do with the Murphy bed, what we were going to do with my shower system, how we were going to cap certain things. So this part of the build is very crucial 
because it's not just insulation and framing, it's planning, 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 planning. You have to sit down and you have to plan. Biggest thing that I have coming up is a wiring diagram. You gotta make sure that your wire diagram is, is not perfect, but you have to have a wiring diagram. What I mean by wiring diagram is where the heck are all of your wires gonna be run? I need to do that next, and that is actually going to be probably one of my next videos because I need to also figure out how many outlets I'm gonna have, how many USB outlets I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna have a TV in here, how's that's gonna plug in, uh, which I am, where my refrigerator's gonna be, which I already know, all the switches I have for everything. I have an electron, I have an electronic ball valve switch, which will uh, have the have the water flush out through an electronic ball valve. I have a water pump switch. You have, you know, I, all these things. You have your light switches. How many lights you're gonna have? Are you gonna be daisy chaining these things? So these are the things you have to plan out, and this is the stage to do it. Just so you know. All right, so that'll all be in the next video, but today I was just happy to get out the insulation and the start of the build. Hopefully you guys are asking yourself all these questions as well, and hopefully you get answers either from me or from anybody else, but hopefully you're getting what you need.